before yielding, steel will essentially load and unload uh, with the same modulus. So before yielding, uh, if I were to load it, I'm going to have a modulus of ES, and if I were to then unload it, I'm going to come back right on that same line uh, before yielding. Uh, then if I were to go into ten or tension or compression or whatever the opposite was, uh, I would come down on with that same slope. And then if I were to go up, I would stay on that same line. Uh, after yielding, it's a different story. Um, so let's say we were to load it in tension past yielding. So this is our yield stress. And then we were to unload. Uh, first, we would unload on this same slope. So we'd have the same slope ES. And we'd have some kind of residual um, deformation or, or locked in uh, inelastic deformations that we'll never get back. Um, if we were to keep um, unloading or, or pass over into compression then, uh, what we'd see is we would see we would no longer have a distinct yield point. So here we have a very distinct sharp yield point. Um, but what we'd see is if we came into compression, we'd kind of round off uh, to get to our yield plateau. And this rounding off of our yield point uh, after yielding is uh, called the Bauschinger effect. And uh, if we were then to come back up and let's say, let's say we keep loading a little bit and then come back up, we'll still have our slope ES. And we could come up and we'll round off again. Um, so you can see Bauschinger effect would have the same effect uh, up there.